This is your brain. This is your brain on drugs. One, and then here we go with the the old oranges of the villains, motherfucking podcast. Back, baby. The oranges, well, the oranges they never die, do they? Oranges never die. Nope. Oranges never die. That's the beauty of the orange. They're like always vampires. Big, always juicy. Always living. Always beautiful and full of life. Always nutritious. Always wrapped up in their skin. Always the color they say they are. Always ready to give you uh, 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 some money if you need for a change. Always ready to lay shit down. Always ready to go out and get shit faced with you when you want to go out and get drunk. Always ready to put some seeds up all in you. Oh, hell yeah. Always ready to make a nice juice. Always ready to be zesty. Always ready to be the best flavor of Smarties. Always ready to be the best villain. True. That is true. And that's us. That's us. Our ages are the villains. We are the best villains. Are the villains. And we are only a couple of oranges, a couple of balls, because we've got one orange down. What See are we... Should we should, we should we go over the fact that we're one orange down, or should we just, like, completely no sell it? We could probably do a montage, an RIP video... Of those best bits? Yeah, it was best bits. Of the third orange? We, we talked about know, the third orange. The third orange loved a bit of uh, Isis. He um, loved Isis. The, I, the, the third orange really was a villain, you know, a, an oh, orange yeah. in the Isis. He was he was a dastardly villain, all right, wasn't he? Oh, man. With his little orange beard and his... <laughs> Little orange gun. (laughs) (laughs) That shot little orange bullets. He'll be back. He'll be back. They always come back. They always come back. They always come back. Mr. Darn's doing really well for himself. What's what else? What's he? What's he up to? So, since we last did this podcast a long time ago, Darn's moved to the city, got himself a girlfriend, moved in with his girlfriend uh, in the city, and the booked a holiday recently so a lot's happened in Darren's life I don't blame him for not wanting to sit down and talk shit on a podcast yeah but think about how much money we're going to make we could have made so much money uh, together as a team we could have split that money split that health and wealth now you and me are just going to have to split it ourselves but now Darren has chose the life of mediocrity in Barcelona (laughs) Barcelona Barcelona that's where he's going. He's going all this Barcelona. Fair enough. Fair enough. But it ain't mediocrity. It's actually a really hell of a good life. And I hope to see the guy soon. We'll see him. We'll see him. We'll see him. Is there like uh, an echo you... coming off for your phone? Huh? I'm hearing like an hearing echo like of what I'm saying. A lot of echo, is there? Yeah. Yeah. Whenever I Whenever talk, I there's echo coming, echo coming off something. Off. What about now? Um. um yeah, there's, there's yeah, a big there's... echo coming off something. Still? God damn. Hang on a second. Don't know what that's about. We don't want to hear no echo up in here, huh? Let me see. That sounds pretty good. How does that sound for you? Yeah, you sound pretty fine to me. Yeah, okay, that's good. All right. We have to cut this out too. God damn it, so much editing. Is there an echo? No, it's fixed. No, it's fixed. Okay, okay. Hope that echo pisses the fuck off. Um. So, old uh, the third orange is doing pretty well. Third orange is doing really well. Um, doesn't really have time to talk on podcasts. I don't think. Fair enough. Whatever floats his boat, I'm, man. I'm sure. I'm sure you'll find some time. Whatever. Speaking, of, speaking of time, huh? Yeah. That mommy thing. Yeah. You you nothing. I think there'll come a time when we can just um, live our lives without the concept of time. We can just like be free to do what we want to do and not think about exactly what number it says on our watches or mobiles or the corner of our laptop screens. Well, you can, you can still do that. I mean, you can talk it's about. hard though. It's hard. I mean, like I've been caught up like just doing a podcast. We've got another podcast. Shout out to the three amigos. There's three of them so far. Sometimes now fucks off, but, <laughs> but he always comes back. He always comes back. They always come back. He loves a bit of wrestling. Um, 
wrestling podcast, which just wrapped up on our second one. And I was just like wanting to do this one because it's hella fun talking just a lot of random shit. But I was just constantly going, oh, the time. I have to be in bed soon. I have to get eight hours sleep. What the hell? What the hell? Well, that's the thing. Like, you know, we can we can record these real quick. And like, we don't Yeah, these are, these are easy enough. We can make time if no, you want to really but do I mean, something, you know? But I mean, it sucks though, you know, constantly going, oh, look at that number. That number said I should be in bed soon. Well, you know, just do. I hate, I hate that. I hate numbers. Numbers, goddamn numbers. No, like just that feeling of always feeling like you've got to be doing something or going somewhere or living around the clock. Yeah. You know, you're like, oh, I want to do that thing, but look at the time it is. I get you, but you know, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. But I mean, you got to blur those lines between work and fun, huh? Whenever we win the lottery, we won't have to worry about time ever again. That's that's a that's a really strange thing, isn't it? Imagine you were like just someone that just had pretty much standard basic wage, like a lot of people around you, and then suddenly just like that, just because you just hit it lucky, you've now got all this money. You know, like 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 it, money. Really, it's strange that money is freedom. Like it's just it that that is crazy. But I mean, like that's that's what it would take to free us up, just to have a shitload of money. Well, not really. If you just get rid of everything and just you know do whatever you want, then you know, like people who live on like tropical islands who just fucking like you know they have like a little wooden house and they just live in the sunshine and go hang out in the beach and fucking drink mai tais that they make themselves. Like you know, you can you can. I think it's perfectly okay and possible to live a life where you don't have to rely on money. The only problem is we live in countries where that kind of lifestyle is not only recognized and enforced, but seen as the only option. I think that there are other options because everybody has that, like their own choices in life. You don't got to do what everybody else tells you to do just because they told you to do it. The only problem is that you always get that resistance. You know, there's always people saying you can't do whatever it is you want to do. And so if you want to do it, if you really want to do it, you just got to ignore everybody else and do it anyway because but are, people are but wrong. Are, but are people saying that or is it just something we've grown to believe? Well, I think... We, no, what, what I think is, I think our society, for example... Well, also, we have people do say, because people tell me this shit every day, but... <laughs> um, you can paint Dylan? They what? You can't paint Dylan. You can't sleep in to five o'clock. You can't eat pizza on a Sunday. I do whatever the fuck I want with the fuck. Well, yeah, I can't paint, but that's beside the point. But like, you can't pee your pants here. Um, but what I mean is, like, like the society we live in now is so, um, like, like you know, everybody gets up and goes to work and does a nine to five, and then comes home again, and then goes to sleep and does it the next day and whatever, and that's it. You know what I mean? That's just the way things work in like our society and our part of the world but you know that that's not the way that life has to be because life can't just be you're born then you go to work forever and then you die like everybody like that can't be the way that it is you can do whatever you want you don't have to be restrained to just um live in the life that everybody else says you have to live the, the, the thing about it is is that because it's so ingrained into everybody's like lives over here that if you were to say, no, I don't want to do this, just like everything else, whenever people are uh, confronted with something they're unfamiliar with, instead of like trying to find out about it and embrace it, they just turn their nose up and go, no, it's impossible, it can't be done. And so life just continues on as always and people go to work and they go to the office and they get all stuffy and angry and then it's, you know... You know? <laughs> it is what it is. You know what I mean? But I don't think that's the way it has to be. I think people can do whatever they want. It's just that there's so many other people there to tell them that they're not allowed to do what they want is the main problem. But then there's a lot of people too living living a life where they just kind of do what they want, doesn't it? But I think there's a lot of people who just live a life that they've been told to live. You know, there's people, I know there's people who just live a life where you go to job, you get married, you have kids, you have a family. And that's and that is life. That is the box that you live in. I don't necessarily think they're told to live this way. It's no, just, no, no. It's but no, no. I don't. I don't mean they're told that as in like one day their dad wakes up and goes, "Listen, here's the rules: job, family, kids, dad, it." 
But I mean, like the way you, you know, the way you go, like the way you live your life, the way you see other people um, acting, and the way yeah. they react to your problems, the way yeah. they react to you saying, "I don't want to have to go and get a nine to five job every day," just because it's so ingrained in everybody's heads, they'll just go, "Well, you have to." Those are the rules. Just because, yeah, just because it's always there, they always get told that it's always, it's just what people do. And I'm like, well, people just don't have to do it just because they've always done it. That's not a good um, explanation, you know. See, like I'm, I'm in like the whole what you say, like health and fitness industry. That's like my area of work, and like what the biggest thing, the biggest thing I come across with people that want to get results in the gym is the fact that they can't get on board with their eating habits, their, their nutrition side of things, which is hugely important if you're going to be in the gym, lifting weights, it's got, and like doing cardio, all the things you're going to do to get strong, get fit, whatever. The, the food plays a major part in that, but most people can't seem to lock down, like especially when people get older as well, they can't seem to lock down the diet part. And like that, like again, that's like no one's told them specifically eat shit, you know, but... I don't know about you, but and, and, and all these people, but I know how my daily habits were, were whenever I was younger. i making like a lot of food, and it would have been just like chips, chips with your 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 base of your meal, plus like maybe something battered, something deep fried, you know. Yeah. And, um, and like, no, no one said to me eat shit. It's just like it's all you see from a young age. Yes. So those, so so really, it's more. Not so much that people tell you to do certain things, but it's habits that are ingrained from things you see in the people that surround you. Yes, you know, it's that's, habits. That's what it is. But people don't see that. They just yeah. think that that's the way you live your life whenever it's just a lot of bad habits that are being passed on down generations. That's not the yeah. way. But people just accept it as a fact of life. You know what I mean? They just go, yeah, this is the way it works because this is what always happens. But yeah, it, that's not, that's not what people have to do. You know, If they want to live their life, because you only get one life, and I would be very bummed if I spent my whole life just working and then I died. I'm like, well, I fucked that up. I didn't do anything, you know? Well, that's it. You know, you've, got, you've really got to challenge yourself to be different, you know, in, in a sense of to be different from everything you see around you. Because you kind of know within yourself. You know if you're, if you're like, you know when you feel satisfied and you feel like you're achieving what you want to achieve and you're going in the direction that you feel you, you want to go in. And you also know when you're feeling stagnant, you're not quite happy, you're quite irritable. You know, like, so you know there that you've got to challenge yourself. You're probably all these feelings, these, like, negative feelings because of the habits you've got yourself into, the people you surround yourself with, the things you listen and watch, you know. Um, and that's all it is. It's like, it's like I, I constantly battle this, you know, this, like, um, like feeling of being whatever, being quite stagnant. But I know deep down that all it takes is just switching little patterns, little habits. Yes. And, and slowly but surely, you will see a difference in the way you live, think, everything, you know? Yeah. Like, just changing habits. And, that, and I think that's the most important thing. Like, it's like like time, for instance, it's really how you approach it. You know, if you do just get five or six hours sleep and you have to go work instead of going, oh, no, but I need eight. It's like, well, tough luck, motherfucker. You didn't get eight. You only got five. Uh, and now you don't choose because, you know, you can't let people down. Like, that's, that's, a, that's a major thing. You don't want to let people down, you know? Yes. And... If you're not a douchebag and you've told someone you're going to work and you have to go to work at that a certain time or or you've just got to get, you know, do your own work, work that's going to benefit you, you know, like work on yourself. And it's like you can't afford just to go, no, you know what, I go back to bed here for three hours. It's like, no, no, it's go time. Like, forget that eight hours, right? Just accept that those eight hours didn't come your way. You only got five. Now go put in work, you know. Don't let those, the fact that you didn't get what's recommended, you know, you didn't get your recommended daily allowance of sleep don't let that ruin the rest of your progress for that day you know mm -hmm. like it's the smallest wee thing that can just put you off the rest of the day because you get it in your mind yeah. you walk around and go on, oh yeah I'm really tired like, and if you keep saying that too if you keep saying yeah I'm really tired you know it's like wee things it's like it's like those little mental things like the plays in your mind like those the things you say to people like oh I could have done this but and you keep making excuses if you keep saying like oh I could have done this but you know circumstances got in the way it's like, well, then circumstances will get in the way yet again down the line. It's like yes. the little things you say, the little things you believe, you know. Sometimes you got to, like, sometimes you got to, like, um, be delusional. You know, you've got to, like, make your mind believe something that you don't really believe in, you know. Like, you, you get what I mean? Like, you've got to tell yourself, no, this is actually quite easy. 
Oh, well, look, kind of. Well, I think you just gotta not worry too much about other people because well, yeah, that, I that, think that used to be thing, a big yeah. thing for me. I used to get really worked up about how other people that's saw me and you know what they thought about me, and then I realized at some point that like you can't worry about other people too much. You just gotta worry about. I don't want. I don't mean this in a selfish way when I say you gotta worry about yourself, oh, but no, I mean okay. I mean that in a kind of like self confidence way. In that, respect. yes, you gotta respect yourself. You gotta like yourself before you can worry about what other people think about you. You know, respect if you're a person like myself or yourself that takes that sort of stuff to heart. You know, especially if you're someone that really cares or have really cared in the past about what people think or say. You know, you're not like you said, not in a selfish way, but not in a detrimental way either. Where you're thinking too much of what people think because. You really can't please anybody. I was listening to a different podcast, and the guy said he, he tweeted this out before, where he said you could save an elderly woman from a burning house, and somewhere out there, someone will still think you're a prick. Yes. You know? Yes, and, exactly. Uh, that's true, you know. Yeah, I know what I mean. Yeah, but that's the thing about people. They're that's it. You just can't worry too much about. No, like that's you, you know, can't let that stuff drag you down. You know what gets me the most? These people that actually nitpick and actually get annoyed at you for just being the way you are, like just being the way you were born, in a sense, you know? Like some people go like, fuck, look at that guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like, that guy cannot help whatsoever that he has the facial features or the hairstyle or the size of feet or the size of a head or whatever that he's got. But, just accept him but or again, her. The way they are, and don't think about like you know, especially things that they can't change. Okay, weight issues. If someone goes, "Oh fuck, I've got a problem with fat people," you know, one, it's pretty much a douchebag thing to say. But yeah. two, okay, at least there, at least you can say like to some degree that's their choice. That was them making themselves that way. But like those things where people really can't change how they look, or you know what I mean. But people well, go like. Oh fuck that person because they don't. You know what I mean? Like, I they, always, they but the, but that's what I'm saying. What they'll always do is they'll say, "Screw that guy," because that guy is not what I expect, quote unquote, normal person to look like. Yeah. And yeah. so that is more of what we were saying earlier. That's just people. I, it's a, it's from people who have experiences from their parents or who they grew up with, just kind of telling them that this is how life is. And if you don't fit into this, then you're wrong. And so that's how other people grow up. They just grow up thinking that a certain way of life is the way you're supposed to live it. And anybody else outside of that is just wrong. It's, I think, personally, what I think it is, is I think that people are afraid to talk to their kids about things. I think, I think that and kids are very inquisitive. They like to know things. But I think that some parents don't want to talk about that kind of just about stuff in general they don't have that kind of good dialogue with their children and so instead of being inquisitive the parents are like you know what are you asking me that for you know go ask somebody else get out of my face and so instead of being inquisitive kids soon learn that asking questions is bad and so because they get a negative reaction to it so they stop asking questions about life and instead they just start observing and so they observe the way their parents get on and like teachers and their other friends and stuff and so they soon see again quote unquote like the proper way to live your life you know they just kind of like they have tunnel vision and they just see what you know other people that they know for example if 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 we were at school right now right and it was like you and me and a couple other guys and some bullies or whatever right and say i was getting bullied by some of the other guys right some people would look at me and go, well, that guy's just doing whatever he wants to do. Fair play to him. Um, it's not his fault he's getting bullied by the bullies. But some other people would look at the bullies all ganged together against me. And the bullies would all look the same. You know, they'd all have their short haircuts and their, you know, etc. Whatever's cool at the time. They're all kind of jumping on trends. They're all, they're all very similar and I'm very unique. So one guy's taking a look at this, he's seeing the bullies over there, bullying one kid, he sees the kid by himself doing what he wants to do, and he's getting the shit kicked out of him by five guys. The guy's going to look at that scenario and go, I want to be with the five guys because I'm going to be safer that way. They seem like they know what they're doing, that seems like it's a good course of action. I don't want to be the guy getting the shit kicked out of him, you know what I mean? 
that's what I think happens in life. I think I think it all leads people don't realize the kind of impact they have with their kids. But I think if you don't talk to them, this is how it all it all kind of spirals. And instead of being inquisitive about life, people just close off and they just become another just like shell of a person. You know, they don't have their own thoughts or feelings. They just see what other people do and go, that's life. That's what we do. But I don't, I, I think you can grow out of that if you catch it early enough. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Like Does it, that make sense? That makes sense. But like to quote, like I, I commented this earlier on like a Facebook post. I think it just sums up when you actually when you just think about reality, or, or, not, or not, not even reality. Reality is kind of a perception of what you make it. But I mean, like just how you would observe society and everyday kind of living is like what George Carlin said of like when you're born in this world, you get a ticket to the freak show. Yeah. When you're born in America, you get a front row seat. You know, and like it really is. If you just sit back, sometimes no matter what you do, shit's just going to hit the fan. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like. Yeah. Even if you are a parent that wants to be very helpful to their children and like they, they, um, tell them good things and be very understanding and listen and provide them with whatever like answer that they feel best fits their question, the, for the kid's probably going to turn into like a fucking murderer. You know, it's like, it's like you can't really, you, you can never, there's no real, and that's the thing with life and, and most areas, I find there's no real like, formula for success or happiness or being a great person you've just got to really like i believe you just gotta look inward you know like that's what worked with me you know and i'm not saying i'm the most happiest guy but i can i think you can solve yourself out and you know make yourself a happier person if you just look inside and kind of deal with a lot of shit that's going on in different areas you know, there's just so many levels of your psyche, you know, and it's not all head. I start to realize this here. You actually start thinking, you know, like you're thinking so much inward, but you, when you think inwardly, you're thinking about your cranium, you're thinking about the brain inside your skull. Mm-hmm. And then all you're thinking about is the physical that you can see, your skin, your eyes, your face, and you think about your brain inside your head. But you forget about this fucking awesome skeleton keeping the whole body and thing. You know, like I think there's so many levels to your being. And I don't know what, how the hell I've got so off track of being judgmental, but this is just something that I've been thinking about lately, just about how goddamn awesome we all are. We're you pretty I mean? good. I mean, you and me are especially, like, you know. We're awesome. We're so awesome. We're pretty good. We're but pretty like, sweet. But, like, but like, it's so fucking weird. Where they, like, humans are so fucking... It's, like, it's crazy. Like, if, if, if humans actually could get out of their mind and take a seat and look at themselves... To be like, holy shit, I control that thing? Yeah, I think that's true. Yeah. Like, people don't really, they don't, but again, they don't get that. They don't realize, like, how fucking, uh, w- like, amazing it is that we're all, like, I've done that. Oh. You ever kind of, like, sit and think, go, I can't believe that, like, all of this weird stuff comes together to make me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, how does all of this stuff, like, connect together and I get to talk and dance and sing and stuff? Like, how does this work? Oh. And then, but you know, there's other people in the life who that's never gone through their fucking head at all. They don't, they would never think of that shit. And that's the difference. It's like, you just got to take some time out and kind of think about that stuff. I think life just happens, you know, like, like life is just, this just happened. But it's like, no, think about how mind blowing it is. You're like this fucking weird creature that's just walking around on this planet we're just a big fucking sack of bones and blood that's been sewed together and can (laughs) see and that's amazing and that we have so much fucking but that's the thing that's the the problem is that the people who don't think like that are the people who just go you know we're alive let's just do what we gotta do till i'm dead and that's that's why like you know so much shit goes down and the, the planet's fucking dying from global warming and stuff is that people don't care about anything they just don't. They have this, like, like they don't even care about themselves, so why would they give a fuck about whether or not the planet's dying? You know what I mean? They don't give a fuck. No. Just, they don't think about this stuff because they're too busy going to work and, you know, earning a wage and getting a mortgage and shit. Like, like you've got to think, you've got to think that, like, something did create this. Like, you, do you know what I mean? Like, this kind of weird reality, if you, like, if you look at, like, TV shows, game shows, uh, computer games, you know, like, 
not not I don't know why I said game shows. Game shows are kind of like reality. You know, you can imagine that. But like I mean, TV shows, movies, uh, games. You know, where people create this weird world. You gotta think somebody created this world. You know what I mean? Oh, that like was me. This reality. That was me. I don't think it's. I don't think it's like a big guy, this guy with a big beard and sandals. But I mean. You gotta think something created this fucking shit show, right? <laughs> that, well, I did. I did this. I made it all. I uh, I made it all, and I made humanity like a horrible, miserable, cancerous thing just for fun. You know, like who's gonna stop me? I'm God, motherfucker. But you know what else is crazy? Like people think like um, it blows our minds that like our body gets like deteriorates and everything, and people are like, no, fucking, let's rise up against this disease. <laughs> like, like you're gonna, like you're gonna like battle this. Disease, you know what I mean? Like, let's rise up because you just said about a cancerous and stuff. Like, you yeah. Know, like, well, no, like, no. I think it's happen, at some point. Well, it's yes. Like, you, know, poison. You, you can, you can, you can, but you can still fight diseases and at some point concede the fact that you're gonna die at some point. Like, you can't fight diseases forever, but at at some points it's good to actually fight it because you're like they're still like if you're like ninety six thousand years old you're like yeah it's probably my time I died you know what I mean but yeah. um, before that there's still plenty of fighting to be done like fight but you know like the way like to make it a thing right see anything that's successful right I've started to realize this anything that is successful on this planet or anything that we buy into it's because it's a thing. Not that it's like well thought out or like it's like some like really something that's really different. It's maybe not that different. It's became just a thing. Like it's just something that people buy into. It is just now a thing. And it's a thing you do, a thing you say, a thing you think, a thing you smell. Do you know, it, it's just a thing. Do you know what I mean? Like, like I'm talking about now like in terms of like business ideas or like you know let's rise up and fight cancer with the with the like you know wearing the pink and the like you know and that's just one element you know and and for a play to these people there like that's that's like i think those things if they are true to what they say they are like the charity charitable things like that they're great but i now we're talking past we're moving on again changing the subjects we're talking about like nike we're talking about like you know like um, kfc mcdonald's subway things like this here they've became a thing, you know, or like people that just suddenly pop out of nowhere. You're like, you know, you, you just think of how these people pop up out of nowhere. Well, you and know, because- you know, a lot of them are doing it just for, to get onto the bandwagon. I think like McDonald's and like KFC and stuff. Don't you always think it's funny whenever McDonald's are like, yeah, let's fight obesity. And you're like, Hey McDonald's, I know exactly how you could fight obesity by having like 50% oh. less McDonald's in the world. If you cut all of this shit out, there wouldn't be a fucking problem, you know? But that's the thing, and the thing is, now the thing is fat loss, you know, it's like obesity, that's end obesity, that's now the cool in thing, you know, so like, let's let us jump on and put a helping hand in here, and it's like, you realise you are the the problem. You're the perpetrator you know? of this fucking thing, you're the one who makes people obese to begin with. Exactly. Let's, let's you know, fight obesity like, by having like, 20% off our double cheeseburgers every week. Yay! Yeah, yeah. That's not the same, you fucks. You know? Like, you know? I think we can't really control how powerful we are. I think that's why we're so destructive. You know? I think there's a lot to be said with um, how persuasive some people can be. I think some but, people... But again, like I said, the, the people who just see stuff and, and kind of do whatever everybody... The people who follow the crowd... The sheep, you know, the people who see what everybody else is doing and, and does it because it's popular. These people are very easily swayed. They fall for trends, which is a the problem. They fall for, you know, popular stuff and things like this. So it's a lot easier to, like, manipulate people because they know a lot of people are going to fall for this kind of stuff. And that's the problem. People need to learn how to be more, like, mentally independent and less... You know, I, I don't mean, like, make yourself a fucking eye cast in the world or whatever, but I mean, like, you gotta just, you gotta have your own, like, personality and kind of spin on things, because if you don't, you're just gonna, you're gonna fall for every fucking trap that is in the, on the road, you know? Yeah, so, I mean, like, so, again, being in the industry that I'm in, you know, to me, it just seems, to maybe it's just because I've done it for so long, I don't know, but it just seems so simple to think, 
if you really, really want what you say you want, it's actually not that hard of a, well, I said there's no real formula, but in this case, lift weights, do some cardio, eat what you know is healthy, and you're going to get the results that you want, you know, and to me it just seems so simple, but it's almost like we have to make everything seem so hard, and, you know, like, then when we make it so hard, it becomes this, it becomes now a thing that we can, that people can hook hook us on because we've made things so difficult for ourselves. We think we have to do something, you know, just crazy to, to get with it. You know, like, I don't know how I'm trying to explain this, but I think if we, I think any area of life that we really want to go into, we automatically think just because we don't know about it, it's going to be difficult. Yes. Therefore, Therefore, we think we have to go through this like hard track or hard road, and I think that's where we we'll slip up so much. Like we, we make things so hard for ourselves by thinking too much, by by um, just thinking we have to work really hard. You know, we have to like work till we're like dissatisfied in order to get what we want. But think things that we want have to be really hard. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And it's like it doesn't have to be that hard. But when you start believing that, you start getting sidetracked. You know what I mean? You start like you've put a mental block in yourself to the point where you will just like want that bit of food. You will want that bit of like materialism, like the, you know, a bit of material that, that whatever it is you gravitate towards, you'll probably gravitate towards it because your mind's just so unfocused because you've made things so goddamn difficult up in your head, you know? And, and I, I can feel that with it myself. You know, I make challenges or, you know, like I make any like sort of goals seem unattainable. Yes. So instead of actually like just put one foot forward and actually just moving, just doing some sort of movement in the right direction, I'll like just start procrastinating like a motherfucker. Yeah. You know? I like sometimes you. I think I am the procrastination king. Yeah, you're pretty good. But I mean, like everybody, every like I think everybody's kind of the same. Like you always feel like you're different too. You always feel like, fuck, I'm here procrastinating with well, this other motherfucker's out being successful. And I was like, no, nah, chances are he's probably watching YouTube videos too. Yeah, yeah, I think so. You know? Mm hmm. I get you. But again, like you said about, like, like back when we started this off with about, like, habits and stuff and about how things get passed on and being observant. Um, I, it's, it's also weird that we can't connect with people that are really successful. Like, we can't look at, like, people having fun. And also making lots of money and like just just getting good things in life, you know. Um, we can't accept that they're also people that just did the damn thing. You know what I mean? Like they did nothing fancy about it. Some people just get where they are because they've got good spirits and they think every every movement they make is in the right direction. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but we can't connect with them people. That's really strange. You know, like we can't go. We can't look at those people and go. I could be there. I want to be there. If he can do it, I can do it. Mm -hmm. We're going to go like, ah, oh, no, what age is he? What genetics does he have? Who his friends? You know, what, 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 who, uh, like who thrusted him into this direction? There must be some kind of secret, you know, and it's like, no, this guy just blurred the lines, you know, like I said, blurred the lines between uh, fun and work and just became an absolute boss at life. Mm -hmm. You know? Well. Uh, um, like, that's one thing with these podcasts. Like, I go, yeah, the podcasts, these are fun. You know, like, I'm like, yeah, I want to do a podcast because I get to speak and express myself like I always want to do. But, like, I never think, like, this podcast can go somewhere, you know? You never you just know. Like you're just talking for talk's sake, you know? But kind of go, like, shit, this could be fun if you could get an alleyway to, you know, to take this, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, we could be motivational speakers. We're so motivational, are we? You and me, we're like Mr. Motivator. So motivational. Oh, we're, because like, such motivate. <laughs> I could just show up to classes and start cutting my face off and be like, see, kids, you can do it too. If you want to cut your face off, you go ahead. Yeah, and then have them safety scissors and watch them go at it. Yeah, because you wouldn't want them to, like, cut their faces off too because you're like, I just did it, so don't go stealing my thunder, you little bitches, yeah. you know? Yeah, like, just make them, let, let them know that, no, you can't do what I can do. Yeah, I, I can, can do this, do I... and you can do it too, but you can't actually do it, so don't do it. Yeah, so don't do it. Um, and leave my face on the wall so you'll we always, re always be reminded that you can't do whatever the fuck you want to do unless mm. you're willing to take that step and take your face off in which but case go for it but don't but don't do it but I, don't think, I don't think you're ready for that shit kids I don't no. think you're ready for that shit no, don't, don't do it 
Don't, you know? No, don't, don't go do you there. Think, do, do you think... Do you think you could do something every day that you've never done before for, like, a month? Maybe. M- maybe not me, though, because I'm a lazy, lazy son of a bitch, but I'm sure somebody could. That'd be a good challenge to try to do one, even if it's the smallest thing that you think you have never done before. Challenge yourself to do one, even if it's like talk to a complete, talk to thirty-one different strangers, talk to a person you have never talked before why, once a day. Why thirty-one? Because that's a month. Well, twenty-eight is also a month. But that's but that's something you've never done before. Do you know what I mean? Like you've never talked to say like I've never talked to that guy before. I'm gonna say hello. And ask his name, and or her name, or whatever. But that's a good challenge, isn't it? Huh? That, uh, you would you would think if you got in that mindset, where if you could if you could carry on doing it past a month, pretty awesome to see where it, where, where you'd end up, like where like what what you, where you um you would think and deal with things. Yeah. Because like that's maybe one part I fucking hate about life. See when you feel like you're doing the same shit every day. That yeah. just sucks, donkey dick. True. Do you know, like when you wake up and you know you you pretty much know in your psyche just what exactly is going to happen in that day. You can, you can pretty much take a whole rundown from start to finish how it's going to go. Yeah, and then you're like, well, this is a waste. I, you know, I just I didn't do anything this day. You know, I knew oh, exactly what I was going to do. And fucking exactly, do it. Like exactly what you're going to do. You know exactly what you're going to eat. You know exactly who you're going to talk to. You know exactly what you're going to do. What what you're going to say, you know exactly what time you're probably going to end up in bed at. I was like, oh. No good. That's why I want to go travel. That's why I want to go traveling. I want to like just like, like just, just have enough money where I can buy a ticket and enough money for food and a bit of travel money and just go for a while. Well, let's, you know, go just- tra- let's go traveling. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to go? Uh, I don't know. You just go with Skyscanner, just look up places, go, yep, hit right there. That looks good. We'll go all over Europe. We'll travel. We'll podcast all around Europe. Podcast, yeah. So we'll do. That'll be our hook. The villains in Europe. Oh, yeah. (laughs) See how many oranges there are in, like, Scandinavia. Yeah. Probably loads. The problem is, how do you get the money? Oh, you know, we'll just sneak on board a ship. Oh, yeah, we were thinking about Hiking, right, trekking around the Swiss Alps. Not too dear to get over there, you know. When's this? Like, sometime in July. And who is we? So, it initially started off that a friend of mine said him and another guy that I know is doing it. And I was like talking to him, I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Then he said the price of flights and all. I was like, I'm like camping and staying over. And I was like, that ain't too bad. So then I said to Sarah, and she's interested, but we couldn't go the exact date those guys were going because of the way she works in the summertime. Yeah. But we were thinking about doing it, like, literally just about a day or two before them. Okay. Sometime in July. And, like, you're talking about how the first night you camp out, and then you start tra- you start tracking up. And, the, the, like, the further you go, there's little huts you can spend the night and pay, like, about five or six pounds to stay the night and keep going the next day. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. We could do that. Yeah. Get it? We could definitely do that. Let's do that. That'd be something pretty awesome to do. That would be sweet. That would be totally sweet. That would be so sweet right now. That'd be so super awesome. Oh god! I'd oh my goodness! To... That would be so. That would be so hot. That would be. Oh my goodness! I love the door. We should actually do that. That would be sweet. That would be sweet. Yeah, it'd be sweet. Think. What do you think, listeners? How awesome would it be if we actually started getting listeners? That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> that would be scary. You imagine people like, "Hey, I listen to all that shit you said on the internet." I'd be like, "Oh, uh oh, that's not good." Oh, oh yeah. Oh shit! Did I insult you? I don't know what I've done. You know what the worst thing is when I go to a bar and somebody goes, somebody will just like somebody I've never, I don't recognize. They'll like point at me and go, "Hey, I know you," and I'm like, "Oh, do you? Uh, oh, 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 what have I yeah, done? Who did I?" Uh, what have I said? Uh oh. That we do always. That's our catchphrase. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> We're always saying that. Uh oh. We're always saying that. How is the musical career coming along? Very slowly. Very slowly. If you want to lose a lot of money really quickly, join a band. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Um. 
which we're in like a catch-22 situation right now where we need people to listen to our music so we have to go out and gig to promote the music however we can't get gigs because not enough people listen to our music so not enough people are going to turn up to our gigs so we're at this weird like kind of catch-22 situation you know we can't put on gigs because we don't have the people to listen to our music but to get the people to listen to our music we need to do the gigs but we can't do the gigs because there's not enough people who listen to our music etc etc um so yeah it's a bit of a it's a bit of a bummer at the moment that's a piece of shit right yeah it sucks i mean here's what sucks the most is that we we all we want to do is just play all three of us just want to go out and play our music to people that's all we want to do we just want to play our music for people that's why we made it we made it so that people can listen to it so we have all this music and we want to play it and we just can't get the opportunities to play it and we feel yeah, I don't know about those guys but I feel very like disheartened about that I'm like all I want to do is to show this music to people and we don't get the chance to you know it's it's a shame it sucks balls though it but does like, it's not, it's, not the, like, it's, it's just the scene here right now it just doesn't seem like it was before you know it well, that's one thing I said to the other guys. I'm like, I feel like, see, if we move to somewhere else, we might have a better shot. I mean, I know it's a silly thing to say since none of us have any money, but like, it, like Belfast or Dublin are the, really the only two places in Northern Ireland you can really go to like get any kind of exposure or anything like that. And Belfast is so clicky, and people just, you know, people in this country they don't want to come out and see live gigs anymore. It's it's a crush. So I feel like if we would have any kind of chance, we'd have to like go over to England or Scotland or somewhere and spend a couple of months there, just like hardcore gigging and building a following there. Because the thing is, if we built a following in like England and Scotland, then came back to Northern Ireland, uh, people would listen to us then. They go, "Oh, you guys are the guys from Northern Ireland. We like you now." And then we would be like, "Well, how come you didn't listen to us when we actually needed people to listen to us?" You know. As soon as we get big, people in Northern Ireland will fucking love us. That's what it. But that's what it is. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. It's one of those like situations where people will listen once to thing. Once it's once you're established. Once it's now like a, not even established, but once they've just heard something about you, then it's become a thing. Like even if you had a, as much as as much as sometimes he'd blow up in your face, and as much as sometimes it's quite annoying and maybe not not natural, but a gimmick. Even in some in some sense, you know, what is? something that really sets you off that people really remember you for, you know. Well, fuzz is our gimmick. But this is the thing, though, fuzz is your gimmick because we know fuzz. But to anybody that doesn't know fuzz behind the drums, you know, it's just this. Well, here's the thing. Yeah, with long hair, if, smashing drums. If they came to our gigs, they'd soon know fuzz the character. They'd soon know fuzz the guy behind the drums. That's the thing. We just gotta get these fucking gigs to show people, you know. That's it, man. But. And that's the, and that's the, at least you're still trying, you know, well, that's, that's, the, that's what I think about stuff. Like if you don't try, you're not going to get anywhere. Right. Like it doesn't matter. Like if I was in a band and we made music and I said, well, there's no point in putting my music up online or there's no point in trying to get gigs. So there's no point in doing this because no one's going to listen to it. If I just say there's no point in doing it, then that's fine. But if I, you know, but, but you know it's not going to happen because you didn't do anything about it. Whereas, if, if I had this music and then put it online and said, let's see what happens, if people buy it, sweet. If they don't, you know, if it doesn't work out, there's no problem because I've done all I can do anyway. You know what I mean? That's yeah. a much better, that's the way I see it. You may as well just do it because if you don't, nobody else is going to do it. You have to go, if you want to do something... You gotta do it because nobody else is gonna do it for you. If it, even if it doesn't work, you still did it, so you can't be that bummed about it. You know. Like two two things are right? two things I think. If you wanna if you wanna achieve something, two things you gotta do is really hardcore believe that it can happen, and two, not so much be a risk taker, but don't be afraid to take risks. Yes. Yeah, you gotta like, just jump. So and I, don't, stuff. I don't mean you've you've got to you've got to take a risk. If you don't take a risk, you're not going to succeed because you can you can play it pretty safe. You know, I think you can play it pretty safe and get to where you want to be. But there's got to be something somewhere, something in you that isn't afraid to take a risk if a risk is called upon. 
And also, like I said, you've got to really, really tune in with the thing you do and believe that that you can you can get where you want to be from doing this thing. You know, like it's not really just like a oh I do it for fun. If you just feel like you're doing it for fun, well, like you're probably never going to get to that level where it's going to become fun slash work. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's just going to remain fun because you just believe it to be fun. You know, you've got to believe that this thing is going to get me, excel me to where I want to be. Like, really believe deeply and hardly into it, you know. And, and I think for a, a lot of people in a lot of cases that don't believe that, you know, that's something I'm trying to cut out. You know, I'm trying to, if I want, if I want something, I want to believe, okay, if, I, if I'm going to actually commit myself to do this, I'm going to believe it's going to work. You know, if I don't believe it's going to work, then I'm not going to commit to it. Yes. You know what? Yes. Like, some somewhere on the line, if you keep doing something, like something can switch anyway, where like you'll 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 turn and start believing it. But you're better right off the bat going right somewhere down the line. Somehow this is going to work. Yeah. Like I'm not going to do this bullshit if I don't believe it's going to work. Well, you gotta yeah. believe. You gotta believe that what you do is going to pay off at some point. You know what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. You know, and you've got to make sure as well the people you surround yourself with also have that mentality. And I'm not. I don't just mean like your band. I mean like. I mean like your closest connections also have that mentality where, you know, we can get shit done and it's going to work out because we believe it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like sometimes you do, you hang up, you, like, you really don't realize it, but you kind of hang around with people and they're like, they're just a little pessimistic and they're a little bit down on stuff. And then you just got to remember that, that again, like other people's opinions on whether or not you can do something may not necessarily be correct you just still gotta jump in and, and do it yourself you know you gotta have that belief in yourself like how you believe trust in yourself and you can achieve anything you can achieve you can get there but like how, how important would it be if you actually your like, closest friends and family whatever actually like were encouraging and like supportive and and you know even if they did, even if they didn't even if they don't fully believe in something you're doing but like they tell you you know what I mean that they have they instill that belief in you, even if they don't fully believe themselves. You know, yeah. Like, I have moments where, like, you know, um, and I think I wrote this status a long time ago. I was like, I was just before I before I started tra- personal training and everything else. I was just training my brother. You know, I want to see him do well because one, he showed me that he can do well within the gym. He can achieve the body and strength that he wanted to achieve because he he done it. So I know he has that somewhere in him, but um. Back when we were just training, you know, and I wanted to see him do well, like, we were going up to a weight, you know, like, I was helping him off with the weight, like, he was just bench press or something, and like, I didn't fully believe that he could do it, but I still helped the bar off the rack, and, like, had, had his back there in case he couldn't do it, but, like, even though I wasn't fully sure and I didn't really believe he could do it, I, like, shouted at him like I believed he could, mm-hmm. you know, because I was thinking, yeah. like, why should I just let my kind of weary thoughts transfer over to him? You know, instead, just instill belief in him. So even if I don't fully believe in it, I'm going to make him believe that he can. You know what I mean? Yes. Do you know what I mean? Like, so there might be something, for some for whatever reason, there's some doubt within you, but what's the point in transferring that doubt over? You may as well just say encouraging, positive, you know, Yeah, thing exactly. Person and, and instill belief in them. Even if you don't fully believe yourself, you can still instill belief in people, you know? So, like... Your friends are like some of your closest friends, depending on depending on where they are in their life, like can just shut your shit down and be like, ha, you're just going, not going to do shit. You know what I mean? Like you're not going to achieve that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But and don't be delusional, but also don't transfer over your shitty beliefs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. That like don't true. go to the point where like, no, I think I'm really totally going to do it, but. At the, you know, if you don't if you don't believe to that degree, maybe don't like actual delusional. But at the same time, don't be like, Haha, "You fucking suck. You're never gonna make it." You know what I mean? Yeah. That doesn't bring you up. That doesn't like that doesn't like create this belief system that's gonna bring you to the next level. That's just gonna make you go, "Whoa, what the hell have I seen that I don't?" Because I kind of believe I can do this, and they're just kind of laughing in my face. Yeah, but that's, again, that's what we're saying. Like, you got you can't worry too much about other people because there's always somebody there to cut you down. You just gotta, like, you gotta rise above, kind of. You just gotta, you gotta rise above. You gotta get the power of positivity on your side. 
Because you, you got a pretty sucky review at one point, you know what we I mean? Did. Kind of just went, oh, that guy, well, he knows what he's talking about. Surely if he's doing this job, so I'm just going to quit, you know? But, yeah. We did get like a very rough review, and then we had a good laugh about it, and then we just moved on. Yeah, that's how you got to do it. We are like, it's I don't care. Like, this guy, there's a lot of shit anyway, so like, what well, you know. Like, if, if we worried too much about what one guy give, thought about us, then we wouldn't, nothing would get done, you know? Like, it's like, it's a, it's a kick in the balls, right? And like, what if someone actually ran over and kicked you in the balls and then ran away and you didn't get back up? You literally said, holy shit, that hurts. I'm just going to lie here in a ball forever because I got kicked in the balls. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're not just, you're not just going to curl up and lie there forever. And if you do, you're a dumbass and you're not going to like live because you're going to be in a ball. Well, and you're not going to eat or drink. You're just going to shrivel up and die. Well, you so, see, I get kicked in the balls so often these days that I'm just used to it. You know, here's my trick. You wear a cup. Just wear a cup. Yeah. yeah. And that's it. And your cup is your laughter. Yeah. And now people are kicking me in the balls all day. Sometimes when they kick me in the balls now, I'll pretend to fall over. I'm like, ooh, you got me. And they run off like, yeah, I kicked him in the balls. But then I stand up. I'm like, ha ha, sucker. Really? You didn't hurt me at all, bitch. But by that time, they're already like out of earshot. They can't hear me slagging them off. So, you know, it's all good. Couple of haters. Couple of haters. We got some haters. <laughs> yeah, got some haters. Got some um, haters. But... Yeah, that's it. If, you know, if no one's hitting on you, how are you going to progress? If people just go, excellent, buddy, you're so good. You know you're right. doing well when somebody hates you. That's it. If no one's criticizing, no one's caring. Because you know whenever people start hating you, there's a little bit of jealousy going on. There's that. Maybe that guy, yeah, maybe that guy is just totally pissed because he thinks you're just all right. These guys are all right. Couple of haters. But Couple like, of haters. You know, but like, he's thinking to himself, Fuck, I always wish I like just get up on stage and just rocked out, you know? Yep. That's how it goes, man. People just... He goes... He can look at you guys and go, oh, these fuck nuts can do it and I never did it, you know? Yeah, but I'm like, it's easy done, though. Somebody came up to me and they're like, oh, yeah, I love you guys going up on stage. I couldn't do it. I'm like, yeah, you can do it if you want to. You can, anybody can do it. If you want to do it. Like, he's like, I'm too old. I'm like, it doesn't matter. If you can play guitar, if you can sing, if you can do any of that shit, you can still do it. You can just Literally, do, you know. if, you, if you can dodge a wrench, you can play on stage. That is true. Yeah. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, exactly. Et cetera. Um, so, like, like, if you people, can... like, it's a shame that, though, that some people just make a, a living off, like, slandering people all day and every day. Well, you know, whatever helps that's, you. That's how they become mind. famous and, like, adored because they're just breaking people down to sit behind going, like, that's what I don't like about gossip columns and things like that. Because, yeah. you know, look, there's the gossipy magazines or the gossipy websites or, like, the gossipy Twitter accounts or whatever, where they're just talking shit about famous people. And I'm like, I find, that, I, I find that very uncomfortable because that's a lot of, like, that's a lot of people sitting around just talking about how much of a dick somebody else is because they got the divorce or... They married somebody ugly or, you know, they went out of the house wearing the wrong shoes. Like, it's a lot of people all at once kind of, like, bitching about other people. And I really think that that's a very creepy um, kind of mentality. But the problem is, like, nowadays, that kind of gossipy thing is the mainstream. It's very... That, you know, people love having a good bitch about famous people fucking up and, you know, getting in fights or getting a divorce or... Um, you know, problems they have and, you know, like paparazzi photos of people in their own house or just relaxing on the beach and people love looking at these and critiquing them and going over it and stuff. And I feel like really, really uncomfortable about that. I think that there's a lot of like scary um, intrusion from the media into other people's lives. And so since then, like the media will, is always trying to get more personal information out of celebrities than they have any right to. And since then, um, people, like, non-famous people spend a lot of time kind of just, like, being horrible and bitchy about other people. And I don't like how that's become a thing now. I don't think that that's, you know, like, the, like people can get together as a community and just, like, talk shit about somebody famous in a very derogatory manner um, about stuff that they have no real, like, privy to. They shouldn't. 
know this kind of stuff and I don't I don't like it. I think it's very creepy and I don't think that that's a good way for humanity to continue on because it's a very negative thing. We we are imposing ourselves into other people's lives purely for the um and the benefit of ourselves so that we can feel better about ourselves because we don't or because we think these famous people are having a shitty day. I'm like, yeah, but imagine if somebody was in your face taking photos of you. Imagine you had the shittiest day in the world and somebody was just sitting, recording it all, taking photos, and then they put it all over the internet the next day. You would be pissed. Yeah, and, like, and then to have just a shit ton of people just laughing at you and talking about you, I'm like, this is horrible. Why Why is this, like, now a thing, you know? And then, like, people have a shit day in their own lives because they're, like... Just, just nobodies, you know. Couple like, of haters. A couple of haters, just a couple of nobodies. Like, because they're these the people they are, you know. And and like, if anyone laughed at them, they'd be like, "No, dude, this is for real, though. This is this is real life. This is real life. You can't laugh at me. You real can't life. laugh at me and my downfall. It's like you were literally just laughing at fucking with you know Paul Rudd's downfall." You know, his downfall. Yeah, you know, let's for example just say Paul Rudd was in the paper for shit okay. on a cat or something. You know, when he was fucked up on bath salts. Yes. And like you're like going, Haha, Paul Rudd's fucked up in bath salts, taking a shit on a cat. And then like, and then you are fucked up at some point, then you're like crying in the street or something. And then like people are like, Haha, you were crying in the street because you're fucked up on Jägermeister. And you know. Then he's like, oh, dude, seriously, that was, that was a really rough time in my life. And, you know, you can't laugh at me at that. But it's like, but you were literally just laughing yeah, at Paul Rudd. But that's what that, that you're doing it to other people, and you think that that's a perfectly yeah. acceptable thing to do. And that's, I don't like that negativity where we can just, you know, impose ourselves on other people's lives with no repercussion at all. Like, just, yeah, people think that they have the right to know about other people's celebrity lives. Which I think is a horrible thing because you no you don't that's that's a like you said if it was if the rules were reversed the people would go we can't do that that's my personal life and you're like yeah it is yeah. your personal life people need to understand the difference between personal and professional lives and give people space because now it's just a lot of bitchy horrible that's just the kind of that's why I think if we're just in that kind of society now where we're all just kind of like you've got this bitchy you know. Um, kind of sense this we're all looking for somebody else to laugh at and to blame and I'm like we shouldn't do that we should just be all, we should just be sweet to one another we should just all be lovely you know we should just walk around having that candy floss to one another yeah exactly we should just all like pat each other on the back and go well, you did a good job buddy and you go what do you mean I haven't done anything I'm like well whenever you do you're going to do a good job out of it you know we should be people positive instead people, of negative people People think that you're being like quote unquote fake if like you're really nice to somebody. You're like, hey, like that's a really fucking cool thing. And they're like, oh, what a fake asshole. What's he looking? People think you're trying to get something if you're yeah. being really nice. They're yeah, trying they're to... like, what are you fishing for? I'm like, I can't just be what, nice. What are you trying to get? Has he got lots of money? You trying to get his money? Well, I, I, am, like, I, am I, like, I like just, I like just like being nice now to get that. Like a guy like um, so I was over in Manchester. Time to pat myself on the back because I did a good thing. But I was uh, not Manchester, Newcastle. No, the guy, <laughs> the guy, the guy comes up to us and he's all like, he's homeless as shit, you know, homeless as fuck. And he's <laughs> like, uh, oh, lads, you know, you're probably sick of guys like me coming up and asking for money, yada, yada, yada. And, um, uh, but like, you know, I really just want money for a place to stay at a night, da, da, da. And the guys were like, oh, no, sorry, lad, I've only got like big notes, you know, like 2010. 20s and 10s or something out like there and I was like ah oh, yeah and then I was like oh, I got money here so I like give him a, I give him like a like a fiver you know and then he like hugged me and I was like that was a, that was a pretty cool moment you know I was like and I was like what could I possibly gain from him you know what I mean like I was just leaving I just didn't want the guy to maybe stay longer in the streets you know he said he wanted a place I believed him I thought maybe five quid would help him the longest way you know yeah. but you could just generally be nice without like any end game, you know. Yeah, People think exactly. It has to be some sort of like you know, it's only like he's gonna go. Oh, thanks for that five pound. Tomorrow I'm gonna see you and give you ten pounds. 
Yeah, exactly. You can you can be you can be nice it, and not get anything back in return. You know, you can just be a nice person. But that and that's the thing too. That's the thing that you need to remember as well. Like you know, not you, but like people in general need to remember that that guy that's like fucking homeless with a beard and carrying <laughs> carry a bin bag around with him. You know, that's still a human being. Do you know what I mean whether you don't look at him or not as a human being? He's still a human being. It's still the same kind of like makeup. You know, he's made up of the same stuff as that guy that you look up to because he's got lots of fucking money and a business, you know. Mm -hmm. And like, that's the thing. Yes. People like, people like, where? Oh, fuck. Hey, fever. Cut this out. I'm sneezing everywhere. I'm going to keep this in. But no, like, I find, I find like, I find homeless people so interesting. I don't look at them as like a piece of shit or like a, as a pity story or, you know what I mean? I, it, it is really sad, but I look at them as quite interesting too because they've literally just give up everything. Yes. And it's like, that's, it, that's an interesting concept. To like just literally decide one day, like, you know, maybe it's not no fictitious things on their own, but like at one point you kind of realize that I'm just here and people don't even know I exist anymore. So like you pretty much don't exist. You don't have a home, you know, you have no money, and it's like Sarah was telling me, like how Anna, she Sarah does a um, shout out to Sarah. Yeah, her sister does a homeless. <laughs> My God, she what helps is the, Why are you so sick? I told you, I told you, I do this podcast. I've got the sneezes, but um, her sister does a walk um, around Belfast, like giving food and stuff to homeless people, and like. Just chat, chat away out of them and stuff. And Sarah said, like, you know, she was surprised how, like, honest they were. And I'm like, you've got to be pretty fucking honest when you're that, you know, when you're that down and out. you just got to be like, you know what? Fuck it. I know I've got nowhere to hide. This is me. You know what I mean? People see me every day. I land right here. I'm not ashamed, you know. I might be ashamed, but they've probably forgot about that shame. They're just now land there trying to survive. Yeah, they don't and have any pretty, options, you know. That's pretty cool if you, like, can literally just drop all the shit, all the illusions you create for yourself, you know, the illusions that you don't even think you that you create for yourself, but you do, to like, to confirm the kind of person you think you are, you know, mm-hmm. if you literally went, nope, now this is literally me, just, just stripper of all the baggage, all the society traits that's put on me, I think that's pretty good, I think it would make you an honest person, you know, I think it would make you more, you would speak more truthful to everybody you met, just because you're like, look dude, I've got nothing to offer you, and, and I have no reason not to, you know, tell the truth. Yeah. yeah so it's, in, it's, it's that, I think that's interesting, you know, I don't just look at them as like, oh, look at that guy, he's like homeless, it's like, no, that, that guy just doesn't sleep in a building, like you sleep in a building. Mm-hmm. You know, but that building, like everything, everything that you have been brought up around, like creates who you are. You know, you attach yourself to the house you live in. You attach yourself to the to your parents and your your like siblings. You know, you attach yourself to your friends. All these things you believe are like a are like a connection to you and what make you you. You know, mm-hmm. but the, what makes you you is just that bag of bones you walk around with every day. Oh yeah, you know that's you. That's me. You, Nothing is attached to you apart from the thoughts and the illusions that you create. And the bones and stuff. And the bones, and the bones. And the bones, yeah, yeah. Lots of bones. You know, and the eyesight, and the... And the well, the my blood. eyesight isn't so good these days. No, your eyesight's terrible. Yeah, it's really bad, yeah. I met a guy at the weekend that, like, was legit your American brother or your brother because we were still convinced you might be American. Okay. Yep, just that, you know. Who... I was like, that guy is Dylan, and she was like, oh shit, yeah, he is Dylan. No, he's but, cool no, but I'm, like, I'm me. He's pretty cool, and he likes weed, so, you know. Who is this guy? I want to meet my he's double gang and shoot him. He has, lo- he has long hair, it's fur, yours is more blonde, his is fur. So he's got long fur hair, he got glasses, I like to smoke weed. This is me, tell this man to leave me alone. I tell, I'm telling you right now, if you two ever bump heads... You will just converse for a very long time, I imagine, because is you're this the guy? Computer. Is this the guy who went and committed all those crimes and then blamed me for them? Because I keep saying I didn't commit any of these crimes, and the police kept arresting me, going, "We got videotape footage of you smoking your weed while you're doing these crimes." If it's this guy doing these crimes and then blaming me for them, I'm going to be really not happy about this. 
You may be him. You know, I'm but not gonna be happy. It's the, the resemblance, though, Dylan. We've got to appreciate everything that is the same as us. Well, I freak out when I see anybody like me because one, I'm like, this is not a good look. I don't know why he'd want to copy this. Second of all, I'm me. Don't be me. I am me. No, if this guy wants to be you, he can damn well be you. He but is you. That would be weird if somebody was just you. Imagine you were just walking around town and you're like, hey, I'm you. And you're like, no, but I'm me. And the guy's like, yeah, but I'm basically you in a different body. You would be like, well, that's a little weird. He's locked down the American accent better than you. Is he from America? He is from America. I think he's from New York. That would maybe. solve that mystery then, wouldn't it? But, like, I'm not fully convinced that you're not from America. How do you know? You didn't. You don't know where you were born. You don't know that you didn't come here when you were very young. And um, I, I, do, I, I do know all of this, though. So. Do you not know this? You do not know this? Though. I do, I do, yeah. I do. I know it. Son of a bitch. You not son of a bitch. I wouldn't lie to you, Connor. If we have ever any viewers that ever listened to a podcast this long, which I don't believe you ever will nope. in your lifetime, but if you do, you've got to know this way, Dylan... He comes to America. He does. Don't let don't let that Northern Irish accent fool you. He's actually from America. I do have a crazy good Northern Ireland accent, don't I? It's incredible. Yeah. You sound like you're just from Belfast. You've lived there all your life, but he is American. That's I'm sure he's American. That that issue is open to debate. I think I think a lot of people could debate till the cows come home exactly where it is I'm from. Because I hear it all but the hey. time, man. I hear it all the time. It gives you a nice voice for this podcast. Not really. It? Not. I wouldn't say that, but... It does. It a, does. a distinct That's... voice, possibly. A nice voice, I would not say I listen, so. I listen, to it, I listen to it back, and it's like, hey, Dylan's got a voice for this, and mine's like, eh, I am from this country. No, but I don't like listening to my voice, though, because it doesn't sound like a real voice. It's a real voice, it's and just, it's really good. It's odd. I don't, want, I don't want to talk about my voice too much. Go on, tell me, think about your voice. Think about it. No, no, Connor. Why have you, why have you done this to me? <laughs> oh, no. Ah! <laughs> I shall get my revenge. I don't have a voice. You've got a voice. We all have voices. We do. We've got voices and choices and oranges to spur. Yay. Is that a good, like, circle? Can I bring it all back? Is that what you're doing? I think it is, and I think we've brought it back, I think. I but think, we're, well, we're up to about an hour in this podcast, so, like... Yeah, fuck. There's a lot of tomfuckery. Uh, hopefully, one day, we'll have our good friend, Dar the Orange Villain Gaddis back. Hopefully, we can make these, like, a semi-regular thing. Maybe, like, two a month or something like that. Just keep them yeah. kind of regular, you know? Yeah, it's a lot of... Not a shit. We we got more popularity through this one than a wrestling podcast. I but think I, so. Yeah, yeah. I still got uh, high hopes for the wrestling podcast. Well, it's because not everybody likes wrestling, but goddamn everybody likes an orange. Everybody loves the orange. Everybody eh? likes an orange. That's the song. Even even the haters. Couple of haters. We got couple, couple of haters. Couple <laughs> haters love the oranges. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Oh, I know. We got both right. haters. What do you? Th- well, if you were to describe this, if you were to describe the haters uh, in a word that wasn't haters, what would you uh-huh. use? I mean, if you were to spell out, for example, if you were to spell out a word that would describe the haters, what? Uh, what, what do you think you go with? Ooh, it's tough, what, isn't it? It's a tough one. What's a tough word ever had to spell? One word. Yeah. Haters. <laughs> S A finish your former. Um W F T F T Soft Soft The Cup of Haters they soft It is Cup of Haters But um the good thing with this podcast is I literally don't have a clue what I said on it. Yeah, we just talk about the shit and then that's the end of it. That's like it. I don't have a clue what was mentioned in this whole podcast. We don't have to Am fuck I- yeah. Until somebody I, comes I, up to you I, tomorrow and says, I loved your podcast yesterday when you said this thing. And you're like, oh, did I say that? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I think it could be very well. Like, yeah, there was a lot of structure. And then I can listen back and go, what? How the hell are we getting that topic from that topic? Yeah. It started yeah. off good. And then, you know, it didn't, didn't end good. 
it's still going? Yeah. Do you want to, should we <laughs> should we stop? I think we should stop. Let's do a really good like ending of the podcast for the people. What would be a good end? Good end. Yeah. Would be eat your oranges and listen to the podcast. That's fantastic. Maybe next you know, time we'll have a better ending, but we'll have a better ending. We'll have a better beginning and a better. Maybe you got an intro for this one. Yeah, we do have an intro. That means so that, that means fun. that means more editing for me, though. God damn it! Watch out for the intro, and we're back, bitches. I like how we waited like an hour and fucking ten minutes into this podcast, and then said right at the end, we said, "Watch out for the beginning." <laughs> They'll already have seen the beginning. Yeah. You should really stay tuned for the beginning. Oh, the beginning's awesome. This end bit, not so good, but yeah. the beginning, fucking fantastic. If you just stay for the beginning, you've done fine. If you stay for the beginning and then stay for the next hour, and you're still the good. The last 10 minutes, not so good, but the first hour is yeah. pretty good. But just really commit yourself for that intro, lasting about 5 to 10 seconds, really good. Oh yeah, sweet, man, sweet. After that, you can just tune the fuck out, because <laughs> it really is your brain on drugs. Yeah, exactly, man. Um, okay. Are we... out of here.